Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here and it's another very late night. We've just gone past midnight. I've been trying to get to do this video all day, but time just has not been working with me. So hopefully part two of our microscope switch is going to enable me to save a little bit of time. Probably not a lot, but we like to think that we can do something positive with the uh, effort we put into all of this. So yes, we are now at part two. It's um, sitting in the workshop. I've set it up in a very rough kind of way and I've hack job the code a fair bit. So I'll bring that up and I'll show you what I've done first. Yes, so I renamed it to the compass switch because I figured it was a more generic type term given that this could be used for many different things. Uh, this is directly off my GitHub source now. You can get it if you want to have a look at it. All right, the biggest thing that I had to, we got it switching last night in terms of knowing when it was in and out of the range that we wanted. But the next thing we need to do is to actually be able to make that um, switch be propagated over to Open Broadcaster. Now Open Broadcaster does have a um, WebSocket system and I had a look at that and I just sort of like, went, yeah, I wasn't really keen on it. So I wanted to go and see if I could simulate a key press. It kind of makes it easier also for the end user should this ever get into a larger sort of audience. Um, it saves the end user having to install things like WebSockets, set up, um, what do you call it, set up authentication and keys and whatever. Anyway, so I ended up, there's a, in X, there is a, um, uh, let's get down on the bottom. Here we go. You can do fake key press testing. It's uh, just called X test. And basically what we're doing is we're faking hold down the shift, faking hold F6. This is if we're going from being active to out of active. And up here we're just doing similar shift F5. And then what I do is in Open Broadcaster, in the hotkeys, we have here, whoop, you can't see that. We have Shift F5, Shift F6 as our launch keys to go into the scenes. So cancel that. So that's all that working. Now there are improvements I've yet to make, like uh, for, I haven't said how I'm going to do the key input from the command line to say what keys you want to use. I have my ideas. It's just going to basically be a drudgery type job. It's not really a intellectually stimulating sort of thing. It's just a case of doing 200 different if-then tests and converting what the person writes on the command line to an actual key code um, defined like this XKF5 and things like that. So that doesn't really make for very interesting videos at all. And I also want to not use this X test fake key event system, mostly because when it happens, um, we can't see it here, it leaves residual um, characters on the screen, which really isn't a big problem if I minimize this, just like that. But yeah, you know, I would like to make it as clean as possible. And also the X-Test fake system does require more headers and it, yeah, this extension X-Test. So it's another library to haul in. I'd like to try and reduce that as much as possible. All right, so does it work? Yeah, well, let's see. Let's switch over to the overhead. I'm gonna pull our microscope out. And what do you know, auto switched. So I can have a look around on the board, look at this disgusting job, I have no idea what happened to this poor thing. Um, wow, that's really been hack jobbed. Nice destruction there. Well, I guess uh, I won't be using this one for a while, it's definitely a spare parts phone. I don't think even Jessa would want to see this, she'd probably scream at me if I sent that. Definitely a spare parts phone. So when we're done, I can move my head away from the microscope now. This is the other thing with the proximity. And I mean, yeah, I could put a proximity sensor somewhere here, up there, and that would be fine. But you know, if I'm looking down on the microscope and I uh, need to move away from something, I don't want it to switch off from being on the overhead, uh, on the microscope view. And the way you can get around that is to say, well, you know, give it 20 or 30 seconds 
before you uh, switch over to the previous view. But you sort of start to try to predict then the behaviour of the person using it. I would rather instead maybe perhaps have proximity sensors, say, on this camera and the one overhead, so that if I just say maybe wave my hand across like that, it will then switch. But for this one, I should be able to just push this in and it'll go back to overhead like that. That's marvellous. So there you go. It's working just fine. So pull it out. And there we are. Push it back in. Easy. I'll just show you the setup too of uh, how this is done. You can see that's the I2C controller. And then you can see I've just double side taped onto the microscope assembly there. Alright, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, you can get the source from GitHub. I'll put the link somewhere in here. I don't know. I'm not very skilled at doing this. What's down there? Who knows? There is uh, only the Linux version at the moment because that's what I use, but there is a person who will probably try and do the Windows version and if they manage to merge that into my GitHub source then that's great and people with Windows will be able to use this. It's a very cheap switch setup. It's probably cost you about $10, $12 at the most off eBay. It's very simple. You just sticky tape it onto your microscope uh, stand, set the parameters of uh, where you want the angle to switch in and out, and you're done. One thing someone's questioned about is what about magnetic fields? Because you know we do work for a lot of electrical stuff here. There's going to be a lot of influence. And fortunately, this is where I like how this is set up. It wiggles at plus or minus five degrees on the compass, it seems, but at the end of the day, it uh, doesn't make a huge sort of impact. Just trying to, I don't know what I've done with the, here we go. So as you can see, it's like wiggling all over the place. Now I could do something like a greater cent uh, number of averages. In fact, I probably will do that to sort of cut the noise down. But because you're doing a sweeping range, you can just simply set that range to the extremes of where this sort of wiggling is, and it works perfectly fine. Okay, so there you have it. Nice cheap solution. It seems to be working really well. I like it. Um, it's now making me think I'm going to go and stick sensors on the other cameras to do other things, and it will make working with Open Broadcaster and doing this sort of thing perhaps a little bit easier and less prone to mistakes. So thank you all for watching. Keep an eye out on the GitHub source and I'll post updates as it happens. In the meantime, you'll take care. I'll see you later.